So we are going to talk about the undetermined coefficients method for solving differential equations using this example. y double prime minus 2y prime plus y equals t squared. Now the undetermined coefficients method basically says that we know a lot of information about the form of our solution y based on this equation. Because all of the terms on the left side are just multiplied by constants, and because the right side of the equation has a t squared, we know that, for example, y could not equal a cosine t. Because no matter how many times we differentiate cosine, all we're going to get back is sines and cosines and sines and cosines. We'll never get a result of t squared. So that's not going to be our solution. Neither will e to the rt, for example. However, we do have one potential way that we could get a solution here, which is y equals a t squared plus b t plus c, just like that. Now you might be wondering why there's a b t plus c term over here. And the reason is, once we differentiate y, y double prime and y prime are going to end up having a 2 a t and then a 2 a in them because of differentiating a t squared. So to cancel those parts out, we have this extra part. Now, because we've guessed that our solution is going to be in this form, we can take the derivatives and then plug it in to solve for our constants a, b, and c. So we get y prime equals 2a t plus b, and then y double prime equals 2a. So let's plug all the information in right here. y double prime is going to be 2a, and then minus 2y prime will be minus 2 times 2a t is 4a t, and then 2b, then plus y is just a t squared plus b t plus c, and that equals t squared over here. Now immediately we can see on the left side of the equation, the only t squared term is a t squared, and then that has to equal t squared, so we know for sure that a equals 1. So that's our first piece of information. Now let's take a look at the t terms. We have a 4a t and then we have a b t right here that need to cancel out. So that means that b t minus 4 a t must equal 0. We know that a is 1, so that means b t minus 4 t equals 0. And of course, this means that b must equal 4 in order for this equation to always be true. So then we have b equals 4, and all we have to do is solve for our final constant c. So now if we look at the constant terms, we have a 2a over here, then minus 2b plus c. Again, there are no constants on the right side of the equation, so that equals 0. a equals 1, so this is just a 2. Minus 2b, 2 times 4 is 8, plus c equals 0. This is negative 6, plus c equals 0, and therefore our final constant is c equals 6. Notice that we have figured out all of the constants right here, so we can finally go back to our solution y and plug in these constants. So we know that our final answer y is going to equal t squared plus 4t plus 6, just like that. Now, there's one question that you might be asking given this solution, which is, where are the arbitrary constants? Because normally when we solved a homogeneous differential equation, if we had a second order equation, we would get two constants coming out. When we did first order linear differential equations, there was an integral, so we got a plus c from that. But we don't have any constants right here, where do they go? And the answer is that this is not the entire solution. This is actually what we call the particular solution of our differential equation. What we need is an additional solution called a complementary solution. The reason for this is remember that when we use this particular solution, t squared plus 4t plus 6, that gives us the result of t squared that we want. But if we added some different solution, y complementary, where plugging it into all these derivatives and adding it up got us to 0, well, t squared plus 0 is again going to be t squared, which means we get this same result, but now we have arbitrary constants that we can play around with. In order to do that, we need to solve y double prime minus 2y prime plus y equals 0, because that way we can add our complementary solution without changing the right side of the equation. And this is a normal homogeneous differential equation, so we guess y equals e to the rt. This characteristic equation will be r squared minus 2r plus 1 equals 0. 
which we factor to r minus 1 squared equals 0. And then that gives us r equals 1 as a double root. So you can watch my video on homogeneous equations and double roots in the description. But we know from this that our complementary solution must be of the form c1 e to the t, e to the 1t, plus c2 t, e to the t. And this t comes from the fact that we have a double root right here of 1. So now we have two different components of the solution to our differential equation here. And if we want to find our final solution y, the actual y, we're going to get the particular solution plus the complementary solution. Because when we do t squared and then add 0, we're still going to get t squared out. So our final answer to this differential equation is t squared plus 4t plus 6 plus c1 e to the t plus c2 t e to the t. And notice we have our two arbitrary constants just like we wanted. Now this is just one example of using undetermined coefficients, but we're going to talk about a few rules that allow you to use the undetermined coefficients method for various different right sides of the equation. First of all, if you have the cosine of a t on the right side of your equation, the question is what function has derivatives that are equal to cosine of a t? And the answer to that is there are two, cosine of a t and then sine of a t. So you're going to guess that the solution is of the form a cosine a t plus b sine of a t, and you can solve for those constants. The next one is this example that we have right here. Say we have t to the power of k, where k is some positive integer. In order to do this, the particular solution is going to be t to the k plus t to the k minus 1 plus t to the k minus 2, all the way down to 1 right here. And then we're going to get constants for each of these, a, b, c, and then say we get all the way down to i and j as our final constants. And remember that this is because the t to the k is what's going to account for the actual t to the k on the right side of the equation. And then all of the rest of these terms are just to cancel out in those derivatives so that we don't get anything extra flying out the right side of the equation. The last one we're going to talk about is if we have e to the rt. But this is not a homogeneous solution. This is if we had e to the rt on the right side of the equation right here. And again, the question is, which function's derivatives are e to the rt? Of course, the answer is just e to the rt. So you're going to guess the particular solution of a e to the rt and solve for your constants just like that. Now, lastly, we're going to go over a couple rules for more complicated differential equations. The first instance we're going to talk about is what happens if you have two things on the right side of the equation right here. So say I put t squared plus e to the 2t. What are you going to do now? Well, just like we talked about with the particular and complementary solutions, if we get one part of the solution that equals t squared, and then we have a different part that equals e to the 2t, then we can add those two together and get the result that we want. So anytime you have two things added on the right side of the equation over here, you can just add the guesses and solve for the constants that way. So in the case of t squared plus e to the 2t, your guess would be a t squared plus b t plus c plus some other constant times e to the 2t. And you can solve for all of them at the same time. The last thing we'll talk about is say instead of a sum, we have a product. So I put e to the 2t times cosine of 3t, what are we going to do now? And just like when we add functions, we add the guesses. When we multiply two functions, we're going to multiply the guesses. So I'll write out the guess for this case so you can get an idea of what it looks like. We would guess that the particular solution here, well, first we would have a t squared plus b t plus c. And then we need some more constants over here. We're going to add e to the 2t. Notice that's the guess that goes with our e to the rt on this side. And then we need to look at the cosine guess, which is going to be over here. So we'll multiply it by d cosine 3t plus e sine 3t. Notice that I didn't multiply any constants by e to the 2t. That's because they would just get multiplied by this d and e, and they would all get absorbed anyway. 
So this would be the guess that we plug in to this differential equation, and we would be able to solve for all the constants. The awesome thing about this is that no matter how ugly these solutions get, as long as they're in the form of products and sums of these functions over here, we can always find an actual solution to the differential equation. One other thing I missed right here is with our cosine of at, we would also have the same guess if we had a sine of at just like that. So that is how to use the undetermined coefficients method to solve these differential equations. Use these guesses over here and the rules we talked about for products and sums to find a guess for the particular solution where you can solve for the constants. Then find a complementary solution by just looking at the homogeneous equation, setting this left part equal to zero, and add the two for your final answer, just like this.